Hello everybody, welcome to the next edition of Appalachian Trail Talk. This is my leg number 24 uh, coming out of my flip-flop on my restart here and uh, I'm going to call this 24.1 because I ended up having to go into Pine Grove, uh, so yeah, Pine Grove but most people can get all the way to Port Clinton. As a matter of fact, my original planning was to go from Duncannon to Port Clinton. That's 70.6 miles. But I had to stop into Pine Grove at 46 and a half. Um, and that was because of an injury. And I did because I went ahead and did a resupply because it had taken me so long. I was, I was kind of out of food anyway. I had to go in uh, because I had to, to go slower with my injury. And... Um, so what I'll do is the next leg, it'll be a short leg, we'll call it 24.2, because most people will probably combine those into at least at least one resupply leg. All right, so you remember um, last time we came, uh, we, we stopped into um, Duncannon, and Duncannon is the, the kind of the, re is the start of the rocks. It's, they start about uh, three miles prior to Duncannon. But this is where the rocks in Pennsylvania pretty much start, and it's traditional that that's where they start. And I mentioned that uh, I think last time, you know, coming out of of Duncannon, it's it's a nice road walk, and you're going to come up here, you're going to cross over the the Susquehanna River, okay? And um, and yeah, here, here's actually the river, okay, that you'll cross over, and it's really pretty. I've got a picture of that in a minute. You make this this nice kind of kind of a ridge line climb up is not too bad um and i think last time i said something about the knife edge but i think that's the next day but but the but the rocks really do kind of get going when they get it again when you get it back up on this ridge line here and there's a a nice pretty view of the river and duncannon that i take i think from about here that i'll, that I'll show you here in just a second all right so um out of duncannon now and uh, starting to make the climb. So, all right. The um, <clears throat> as you can see, I planned on about a, a four days to get to um, Port Clinton, but that's not uh, what ended up actually happening. And you have to you have to be able to adapt. Uh, you can send a drop box here to Port Clinton. You're going to walk right by the post office. So. If you don't want to go into Hamburg to resupply, because there's not, I don't think there's any resupply in Port Clinton itself. It's literally just, I mean, the, the place is so small that everybody has a post office box. They don't even do home delivery for the mail there. Um, you pretty much, um, if you don't want to go down into Hamburg, then, um, and that's where the largest Cabela is at, you're, you're, you, you want to go ahead and maybe send a, a drop box to, to Port Clinton. And this would be a good place to, if you need to to do that, uh, you know, send it out of out of out of Duncan on there. All right. Um, so as you can see, it's a relatively flat walk here as you go across the cross the Susquehanna, and you start up. And this road walk is, you know, it's it's almost a couple of miles here, uh, a flat a flat walk. So you can make some pretty good time, and then you start to climb up. Now, uh, I think the view here is not the view that I'm going to show you uh, here in a second. But, uh, but let me go ahead and, and, and put those in here now. And you can see the, uh, the, the beautiful crossing the beautiful Susquehanna River. And there was just a little bit of a light, light fog that was just starting to lift up off the, the city. And then uh, the climb up and you'll see a view down of the two bridges and the city and how really beautiful that is. Okay, so once you kind of you get back up on the on on the ridge line here, you're gonna face the rocks. And I'll show you those in a second. But what I want to point out, and this is a bit a big foot stomper. Okay, now is the reality check with water. Okay, in Pencil now in Pennsylvania, just like how it was in Virginia, those long ridge line walks, you're gonna to need to pay attention to water management. Okay, and um, in this from 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 the Clark's Ferry Shelter here, which is where I stopped in, and I rehydrated myself and filled up as much water as I could carry because you've got 
basically a 13.1 um, hike to the next water source. Okay, so 13.1 miles. Now here it's the 28th of April. And oh, by the way, if you want to go in and watch this series of videos, it starts uh, day 28 on the 28th of April. And, um, but if you're where you would normally be if you're Nobo, you could probably be here, you know, if you're, if you're doing your normal uh, a March start, you, you know, you might be here July. You know, if you're doing an April start, you might be here August. Uh, there's going to be a lot of water sources that are dried up, so you really need to start paying attention to water, okay? So, so I went in here to get water, and then you come out, and once again, you're, you're, up, on, you're up on the ridge line, and I can't remember just exactly where this, this part of the trail was at uh, along here, but let me show you what, what some of those rocks look like as far as the, the trail goes. Okay, uh, quite not quite rocky. All right, um, uh, decided to stay then to stay the night at uh, Peter Mountain Shelter. There was a forecast for uh, like ninety percent chance of thunderstorms, and and notice here, you know, when I said that there was thirteen point one miles to go without any water, that was to this water source down here. Well, Peter Mountain does it have water? Yeah seasonal down a 300 foot steep rock descent okay and so i didn't want to do that now i ended up here at peter mountain with one liter of water and uh, you, know, you use half of that for dinner and uh, that half a liter then needed to to to, to make it here this 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 distance so i kind of knew i was in trouble but I did a little gambling. Instead of taking the descent down to get water, I decided to see what would happen if they ever rained that night. I always could always go down in the morning if I needed to. Well, it rained that night. The shelter here was a two-level shelter, uh, you know, 16 people. It had uh, rain spouts on it, and um, about, I don't know, I let it rain for a good uh, five, five, ten minutes of, of a good hard rain to kind of wash everything off the roof and wash down the downspouts. And I went out and I, I filtered three liters of water, uh, rainwater. And so, uh, and, and drank, <laughs> and drank a liter. So I had, I had plenty of water then. So I took that gamble, which worked since some, um, it, it's such a, it's such a, a long trail until you can get back down here to, uh, to the water. Now, unfortunately with all that rain, the rocks were slick. And somewhere in here, I, uh, I had a pretty bad fall. Um, I broke my cardinal rule. It's a rule that I had learned the hard way many times, is to never step on a rock that's at about a 45 degree slant. And uh, I, I took a step over and I would have had to make a, I would have had to come down, which is a little harder on the knee and in between two rocks. But I decided just to go ahead and step across to the, the rock that was sloping kind of teal, heel to toe with my left foot and it was slippery and the, my, I basically it went out from under me the foot that I had planted my right foot on the ground stayed there and I did the splits and um, could have probably pulled a groin muscle but it, what it ended up doing is tearing my right hamstring and I knew it tore well I knew I heard it at the moment um, and it was a pretty bad injury because everything, everything tightened up. I couldn't reach, I couldn't really bend over to pick anything up off the ground at that point. Uh, I had to take a little bit of time to kind of get things loosened up, but eventually that the whole backside of my thigh, uh, was bruised, a very deep red, a deep uh, purple, uh, uh, bruise. So I knew that I had, uh, I had done some, some damage. Um, See, Furby and Cowboy stayed with me uh, in the shelter that night. Uh, we, we, we walked together this day, and um, they ended up, I think, staying down here for the night. There was some, some stealth camping down here. 
Um, I made that descent down, um, got some water here to spring, pipe spring. It was really, it was really uh, nice and cold. Um, took a took a break there. Was really really down. It was the the injury was was obvious uh, at this point in time. That was a very serious injury. Uh, took about a thousand milligrams of Motrin. Uh, some of the, I mean, of Tylenol. I can't take um, insats like um, you know the ibuprofens, Motrin's because of uh, of uh, my post heart attack med situation. So. I'm kind of stuck with just Tylenol. So I popped a thousand milligrams of Tylenol. I started to make this, this climb. Now of all these water sources, okay, one of them was dried up. One of them had mining runoff in it and it was just as, as bright orange with rust as you can imagine. Probably would have destroyed a, a water filter. Uh, the other one I got some water from, thinking that I would get some water here that turned out to be, I think this was the one that was dried up. So I ended up at the top of this little knoll here, and there were some campsites up there, and a couple of us, um, I think there was a, a day hiker or two, or a weekender that was up there and uh, stayed here for the night. A uh, really nice man shared uh, shared one of his... Um, uh, good to go meals. It's something. It's a. It's a. It's a cottage company out of I think Maine that makes these really good dehydrated. So it's like a risotto, mushroom risotto that he shared with me. That was that was really good. Very nice of him. And uh, I stayed the night there for the night, and then uh, and then the next day, just started slugging it along. You know, doing the best I can, trying to walk. Um, my my right ankle started to hurt. Somewhere in here. Uh, because of the strain I was putting on it with how I had to uh, alter my gait. I think this is where I started to really do some adverse wearing on my uh, on my Loa boots uh, during this period of time. And uh, let's see. Four. I think my goal being injured was to make Roush Gap, but I was pretty proud of myself. I got here and went, you know, I, I, I can do this. I can do this. I can, I, can, I can get down here to this campsite was my, my goal. Well, I made it to about here, and there were some stealth campsites. Um, I, had, I had water, and I, I ended up um, stopping for the night. All right, that next day, um, coming down um, this, uh, this campsite stream, um, was a little challenging to get across. Um, it had a downed tree that was actually quite large, which made it nice for walking. But when I got to the other side, I really had a difficulty trying to get off of it and get down. It was probably five and a half feet off the ground. And somehow I had to, to with my with my leg that I couldn't bend, get off of that tree. And I'll show you what that, 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 that beautiful stream crossing looks like. All right, um, we come, we, 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 we come, and we're gonna we're gonna cross underneath I eighty here, um, which is a which is actually that's quite a ways up. It's a it's a huge ravine that you're underneath here, and then you're gonna start a climb up, back up to um, the uh, this ridge line. There's there's a there's an overlook here where the power lines have been removed, but the cut in the trees is still there. Um, not a spectacular view. I thought about showing you the, the, the view from there, but it was um, nothing nothing to, to, to get all excited about, so I didn't, didn't throw that in there. And the goal was here to get to the William Penn shelter for the night uh, because I decided at this point in time I was moving slow enough I was not going to make Port Clinton, and I, need, I needed to go into Pine Grove. Um, I needed to go in and shower, uh, do some laundry. And now get a little bit of resupply. So and so normally my, my goal would have been to get the 501 shelter. And I believe I could, even with my injury, I believe I could have done that. And that may have been um, an idea. But uh, at the time, this William Penn shelter, it's a nice shelter. It's a big two-decker shelter. And uh, so I went ahead and decided to stay there. Once again, there were supposed to be thunderstorms that night. And... Um, decided to stay in the shelter. Now here the water source is on the opposite. So the, the, the shelter is east and the water is west of the trail. So I came and dropped my stuff, claimed my spot, 
And uh, we had not a full shelter that night. There's probably, uh, I don't know, five or six of us, I think, if I remember, at the shelter. And uh, that's where I met Jackal for the first time. He was a, a, a flip flopper. Uh, I believe he, he, I think he made the whole, the whole, the whole track. And uh, but he was uh, he was doing really well. Um, he let's see. So so I went over to get some water on this Blue Blaze Trail, and I think I was coming back, and I noticed this just this mambo jambo. Uh, black rat snake crawling down a tree, and if you want to watch that on video, it's 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 a pretty cool um, episode there where um, where this big I mean it's about five six feet long. Uh, I've got a picture of it here on once it got down on the ground. There were a couple of French Canadians that were were going to camp over there and saw the snake and they weren't sure if they should. They they weren't familiar with with snakes and I uh, I talked to them about how and you may not know this y'all but. Um, so how do you tell if a snake's poisonous or not? Well, in North America, all venomous snakes have slit eyes like cat eyes. Okay? And there's one exception, uh, and that's the Florida the coral snake. Okay? And the, the coral snake has the black and the red and the yellow, the orange uh, rings around it. It has round eyes, but it doesn't have a fang. So to get it's very, very deadly, but you almost have to taunt it and and, and, and force it to, to bite you. It's going to gnaw on you. And once it, once it does, you're in trouble. Um, but anywhere else in the United States, a snake is poisonous if it has slit cat eyes. Okay? So that'll help you, uh, that'll help you know your snakes. Anyway, let me show you a picture of what that snake looks like. Okay, so um, it did rain that night. Um, and it, the wind blew really hard, but not at the same time. Otherwise, we would have gotten wet in the shelter the direction the wind was coming from. So when the wind died down, it started raining. It just kind of came straight down, and it worked out pretty well. That next day, coming out of the William Penn Shelter, the trail is a beautiful trail all the way to Pennsylvania 645. Like, just no rocks, nice and smooth, just, just really nice. But this is not necessarily where you want to get a ride into to Pine Grove. You're going, to, you're going to cross the road. You're going to keep going uh, here to Pennsylvania 501. We're close to where the, the 501 shelter is. All right. And that's uh, a place to get picked up to go into Pine Grove. All right. Most people probably won't need to do this. But in case you do, let's just talk about what that what that looks like. Okay. So, so here you've got, here's the William Penn shelter. Here's this really nice section of trail. Okay. This is not a major road, so if you want to hitchhike, it's not going to happen from here, okay? Um, but there is parking there. I would recommend you come down here to the 501 shelter, where you could probably get a, uh, a hitchhike in. Now, uh, the, the, the particular shuttle driver that I called charged $15 each way, but if I paid up front for a round trip, it was $25, so that's what I did. So he took me down here to the Econo Lodge, Okay, there's a Dollar General for resupply. Um, there is a Comfort Inn if you're interested in, in that. There's also a Hampton Inn. Here, the travel, the Pilot Travel Center is where I went over and had my, uh, um, I got my laundry. I did my laundry over there, okay. And there's also a nice diner where I went and had a, a good meal. Now, and the next day then, uh, I headed back out, got my shuttle back out, and I, I continued on. In retrospect, um, because I ended up taking a zero in in uh, Hamburg uh, because of the the really bad rain and everything, um, and it, I I honestly with the injury that I had I should have taken I should have taken about three days off the trail down here. Okay, I should have I should have probably maybe tried to get to an urgent care um, if I could have gotten a ride to one. Um, but minimally, um, you know, I did some icy hot, but I probably should have done some wrapping or something and some immobilizing, um, during that period of time and just stayed off of it for three days. I may have, I may have saved my hike, uh, but instead I didn't do that. I continued to put a lot of strain with a bad gait, which eventually led to, um, enough fatigue that when I stepped in a hole, um, in New Jersey and, kind of hyperextended my knee at the same time 
I think that's when I tore my my hams in my uh, Achilles tendon because that whole foot had already been had already been strained and compromised. And today, I'm still suffering with some tendon damage, even though my Achilles is is healing well. I've still got some some tendons that I'm I'm working on. And today is what is today, March 18th of 2018. And so this 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 all is going back to the end of April last year. So so some mistakes that I made. So anyway, that's what uh, that's what Pine Grove looks like. If you have to if you have to go in to do a resupply, obviously it's really a little expensive because it was twenty five dollars for a round trip to go and resupply. Not your first choice. I think most people will probably go be able to go into Port Clinton and then into Hamburg, and we'll talk about that on leg twenty four point two. All right, everybody, have a good day. Bye.